Shalom everyone, this is Ty Green. We're in the transition into the collapse that leads into the fall of this present world government, or what is referred to as this present world order. The Bible shares this through prophecy, not so that we're afraid, but to call to awareness that Jesus Christ is coming, just like scripture says. It's a prompt to repentance. It's a call to salvation through Jesus Christ. Some drastic changes are coming up, and if your foundation is not built on Jesus, it's going to sink. It's going to collapse. It's going to erode away. The erosion of the infrastructures around the world are already occurring. We were warned recently by the Department of Homeland Security of cyber attacks against our infrastructure here in the United States. But take a look at this expansion of participants in the cyber war related to the Russia-Ukraine conflict. The notorious hacking group Anonymous has declared war on Russia and is targeting Russian websites. The group that has also targeted U.S. sites in the past now says Putin's regime is fair game. Joining us now, NBC News correspondent Tom Costello. Tom, what more can you tell us? Well, you know, for years, the U.S. has accused the Russian government of cyber attacks, sometimes working alongside Russian cyber criminals. But now Russia is on the crosshairs. And before you celebrate, think about how quickly this could snowball into an all-out global cyber war. This is a message to Vladimir Putin from Anonymous. The group calls itself Anonymous. Unaffiliated hackers around the world now putting Russia in the crosshairs. Members of Anonymous have declared cyber war against your aggressive regime. They claim they've already targeted more than 1,500 Russian websites, including Kremlin-controlled news agencies, the Ministry of Defense and Space Agency, Russian oil companies, Internet providers, even TV channels. Their call uh, to fight in the cyberspace has resulted in a lot of websites not being available, some websites going down, and a lot of records, uh, you know, Russian government, Russian military records being dumped out under the Internet. U.S. officials confirm they've seen evidence of the anonymous hacks after Russia launched a cyber and ground offensive against Ukraine. But the real risk to Russia long term is the canceling of their access to Internet infrastructure as private sector companies decide that they're going to delist or no longer carry their traffic. Cutting off Russia from the world would also deprive everyday Russians of access to outside news and information. And cyber pros worry Russia may view the anonymous hacks as Western attacks and target U.S. government and company sites. U.S. Cybersecurity Director Jen Easterly. How at risk is the, is the average American or that very small business owner? Everybody's at risk which is why at the end of the day, they need to take the steps to protect their systems, their networks, and their data. This can happen to anyone. There is no one that is immune from potentially getting hacked. The cybersecurity basics never click on suspicious emails or links, use complicated passwords, and multi-step authentication. Back up your computers and keep security software up to date. This basically ensures that he can log in even when the password is changed. Israeli firm CyberBit uses real-world attacks to train American companies to defend themselves. The questions organizations need to ask themselves is not if they are going to be hit, but when they are going to be hit. As for Anonymous now targeting Russia, we are anonymous. We are legion. Expect us. Russia has always been perceived as the cyber attacker, and now they're on the receiving end. Instead of always being on offense, they also got to be on defense, and that really lowers their capability in some ways to also do attacks. Yeah, that's the concern here. The cyber battlefield mm -hmm. seems to be expanding by the day. You know, we've already seen U.S. oil pipelines, food supplies, hospitals, banks attacked in recent years. Experts say they could be targeted again, but also electric grids, dams, water systems. Everything is a potential target right now. By the way, the U.S. Cybersecurity Agency, if you're a small business or just a typical American family, they have great resources online how to protect yourself. The warnings of potential cyber attacks were connected to a response that Russia may have to any NATO country as a result of aiding Ukraine. Many countries 
have crossed that line. As a result, are we to expect a response through cyber warfare? Somebody is going to find out soon enough. Look at this. Reports that Russia is being blocked from the internet. Then we wonder what's going on over here. Look at this. Russia's denying that it's about to cut itself off from the global internet, but it's acting a lot like it. I want to highlight sections of this article. There's a Russian government document doing the rounds that has led some to suggest the country is preparing to disconnect from the global internet. The letter appears to be in order from Andrei Chernenko, Russia's deputy digital minister, demanding that Russia's state-owned websites and online portals beef up their security by Friday this week. I want to show you a tweet with that document attached. The tweet says Russia began active preparations for disconnection from the global internet no later than March 11th, all servers and domains must be transferred to the Russian zone. In addition, detailed data on the network infrastructure of the sites is being collected. Now, continuing on with this article, that document in that tweet says basically this. It tells them to move their hosting to Russian services if they are currently using foreign hosting services and to scrub their web pages of all JavaScript code that has been downloaded from foreign sources. Some expect Russia to isolate itself as a defensive measure from what's going on, but also as a preparation of an offensive cyber attack. They would be able to launch attacks, but a retaliatory cyber attack against them would be minimal because they're disconnected from the internet and on their own intranet. Further in this article, there's a quote from Rafael Rohozinski that I wanna show you. Now, he leads a geopolitical digital risk practice, and he also served as an advisor to the United Nations and to other organizations in more than 37 countries and directed the Advanced Network Research Group at the University of Cambridge. Listen to what he says about this in this very same article. He says, it's curious that it's not geopolitics forcing Russia off the net, it's purely economics. However, while Russia has not so far launched the quote unquote cyber Pearl Harbor everybody expected to see at the start of this invasion, it is still possible that Russia is preparing cyber attacks on Western critical infrastructure and preparing to be hit back. I don't think we can exclude the fact that cyberspace may become a bigger part of this conflict in the coming weeks, he said. Russia hunkering down behind its digital defenses may be one way it's taking a defensive posture while getting ready for a much more offensive posture as well. So now we have a situation where global hacker groups such as Anonymous are stepping in. Some believe it doesn't matter what they're doing, but on the contrary, it obscures who's doing what in addition to one country involved in cyber warfare against another. This topic keeps coming up, but we saw this before, didn't we? People assume uh, we are just going back uh, to the good old world which we had, um, and everything will be normal again in how we are used to normal, in the old fashion. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. We all know, but still, Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, 
transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. Worldwide drill got underway today with the goal of better preparing for the new world of major cyber attacks. Hackers these days are getting bolder and could target the systems that we rely on every single day. Senior investigator Kendra Nichols reports tonight. Cyber Polygon is an annual event hosted by the World Economic Forum. Think of it as a worldwide training exercise on how to deal with cyber attacks. It is inevitable that some larger attack is going to occur one day. Security experts like John Sansonito are watching what happens. What's being talked about uh, today and over the next couple of days is a potential real world situation which we could be facing at another six months and another year or even tomorrow. This year, 200 teams from 48 countries registered for the training. Companies like IBM, Santander, and Ernst & Young are on the list. The focus of the live drill this year, a targeted supply chain attack on a corporation. Something that, if it happened in real life, would affect all of us by shutting down things like water treatment facilities, the power grid, or even the internet itself. What would you do if you couldn't access your bank accounts, if you couldn't access the internet, if your cell phone suddenly stopped working? These are the kind of things that people really do need to think through because one day may, may be facing a crisis like that. The bad guys are never stopping. Centric Bank, like all banks, is constantly fighting potential cyber attacks. Over the course of a quarter, uh, it's in excess of a million. And they can pinpoint where the attempted attacks are coming from. Russia is, is number one, uh, followed by the Netherlands, and then, uh, you know, it can, goes down the scale. But by far, uh, Russia surpasses all the others combined. Uh, there's a silent war going on, and it, it's truly what it is, you know, to, you know, you know keep the, the bad guys, you know, at bay and keep, you know, all the information safe. I would be prepared just because the writing is on the wall. The nations of the world that participated in Cyber Polygon, I don't believe, are prepared for what's coming. Many thought this was a conspiracy theory. But here's their promo. So what's the takeaway of knowing this cyber event could be looming in the background? So what's the takeaway? Well, don't be afraid. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind, right? But we should be prepared, not only with our soul salvation, but we must be prepared to occupy until the Lord comes for us. We must not be ineffective during this time. Certainly, in some places of the world, there will be folks eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, just like the days of Noah. But in other parts of the world, there may be disruptions. We must be effective, be prepared, be ready. Keep watching for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is coming he will show up all right till we meet again live holy before the lord love y'all shalom <laughs>